Good morrow, friends. This is Jordan, and you're listening to Not Strictly History. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Not Strictly History. It is great to be with you today, as always, and you guys, okay, I'm pausing for effect. No, I'm so freaking excited. Today, we are doing something that I have wanted to do for a really, really, really long time. This is a very special episode that has been a long time coming. I was actually going to do it earlier in the season, but then life happened And obviously it didn't happen, but we're here now and I'm so excited. Today, without further ado, we have a special guest on the podcast today. Not only do we have a special guest, but we're talking about something freaking amazing. So this is like the greatest episode of all time. Our special guest just happens to be probably the person that I talk about the most. And that would be my younger sister, Josie. What's up, everybody? (laughs) She's nervous. nervous. She's a little nervous, but that's okay. Josie, what is it like to be on such a renowned podcast? I can't say what I was going to say. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I'd like to thank God because I feel God in this chili. (laughs) (laughs) Like an acceptance speech. No, that's okay. That's amazing. (laughs) So I'm really excited to have Josie here. This is going to be amazeballs, everybody. Today, Josie and I have come together to talk about probably what is like our collective favorite movie. Josie and I as an entity. Yeah, like if you have to put both of us together, this would be our number one movie. Exactly. I think. I feel like that's a good way to say it. Yeah. So, what is that movie? The movie we're discussing today is Dirty Dancing. Patrick Swayze version. There's no other version. That's that's the the only only one that has ever existed. Or will ever exist. Although, I've heard, and by that I mean I saw this on Wikipedia, that there's a sequel coming out in a couple years. And Jennifer Grey is in it. She's blinking. She's processing this information. Like, like she's still baby. I think or so. Or is she like, are they doing a remake No, I think and it's, she's like the mom? No, I think it's a straight up sequel. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about it. Me either. To be I honest. Don't, I don't really like that. I don't love it. But I'll keep an open mind. I'll keep as open of a mind as possible. Okay, so let's begin, friends. Let's talk about Dirty Dancing. Jose, do you want to run us through some of the basic facts of Dirty Dancing? Well, it was made in 1987 or released in 1987. Both? It was, it was released in 1987. Filming started in 86. Written by Eleanor Bergstein or Steen? Yes. And produced by Linda... I don't know how to say your last name, Linda. Gotlieb? That seems right. I don't know how to say the director's name. Directed by Emil Ardolino. Starring Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey. They could not have cast this movie better. There's literally nobody else that could have played either of these roles, except that in researching this episode jordan found out that somebody else almost played johnny castle and he's the only person i would have accepted the only Patrick suitable Swayze. alternative yeah yeah you can tell who that is it was the one and only val kilmer my friends again the only suitable alternative for johnny castle however i mean it's patrick swayze so like we're not mad and what happened? You can't be. You can't be, you can't be mad. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this film was released to the whole United States on August twenty first, nineteen eighty seven. Now, guys, this is really intriguing. Okay, the budget for this movie 
was 4.5 million when at the time the average film budget was 12 million so actually the production company and everything they weren't like super sold on the idea the only way they were going to make this movie is if they cut the budget which they did so budget of 4.5 million and then it ended up making 214 million which i would say is a pretty good turnaround also, really fun fact about this film, it was the very first film to sell more than a million copies for home video, because you need Johnny Castle in your home, obviously. So, okay, everybody, there's a lot of other fun facts about this film that are really, really cool, but it would not be strictly, not strictly history if that's all we talked about. So we are going to be breaking down the film for you. We're going to be going through the film, talking about all our favorite things, favorite characters, favorite lines, overanalyzing everything. Because as a rule, Josie and I watch this movie about once a month. It's just a maintenance thing. Um, so we're going to get started on that. And we're really excited to be here today. Aren't we, Jose? So excited. I cannot deal with it. That sounded really sarcastic. I promise that it's not. <laughs> Oh, gosh. So to start things off, we'll start at the very beginning of the movie, which is the opening credits. And the opening credits, to anybody who has not seen this movie, which if you're listening to this podcast, you should probably stop and watch it because there's definitely spoilers. Um, spoilers galore. Yeah, and if you haven't watched this movie, I mean, you're not living life to its fullest potential. Anyway, (laughs) so the movie starts by opening with all of these different couples dancing with each other. But how are they dancing? Dirty dancing. (laughs) (laughs) And it's kind of like a slow motion situation. And it starts off with this really great 60s song. And it's just beautiful. And it's actually one of, like, my very favorite parts of the whole movie. Because all of the people that you see in the beginning are featured throughout the rest of the movie. But you never get to, like, hear any of them talk or anything. You just get to observe them as couples through the rest of the movie. And I love them. They're so great. They're so great. I mean... For those, so this movie, again, it was released in 1987, but it's set in 1963. I don't know if you have or have not seen the movie or if you know the iconic opening of this movie. Um, it's, I told Josie she didn't have to quote it. Neither of us have to quote it, but it's, but are we going to quote We it? might end up quoting it. I quoted it once for my friend Eugenia and she filmed me doing it. It was really embarrassing. It happened before it, I just, I didn't know. Okay. But so they're driving in the car. The windows are down. She's reading a book. She's reading a book. Baby. Our main character, Baby, is reading a book. Baby Houseman. In the back seat of the car. Next to her is her sister, Lisa. And then her father is driving and her mother's in the front seat. On their way to Kellerman's. A resort. A summer resort. So let's just quote it. Because people want to. Because we. May or may not know this movie word for word. I think we do. <clears throat> okay. Okay. That, that was, was the summer, summer of 1963. Before, before President, President Kennedy, Kennedy was shot, shot before, before the Beatles, Beatles came, came, when I couldn't wait to join the Peace Corps, and I thought, thought I'd, I'd never meet a guy. I thought it was meat. I thought it was fine. A guy, a guy as, as great, great as, as my dad. dad. <laughs> That, that was the summer we, we went to Kellerman's. <laughs> we kind of butchered that. But. <laughs> I promise we know it. <laughs> so Baby and her family are going for an extended vacation at Kellerman's Resort in the mountains. It's actually in the Catskill Mountains, my friends. Do you remember what else was in the Catskills? Woodstock. Thank you. Go ahead, Jose. Right off the bat, when they get to Kellerman's, Lisa is just such an interesting character because she's not like (laughs) what you see of her is what she is and you think that there's going to be more and there just never is and I love that about her she's so genuinely herself 
she's so genuinely surface level and really right off the bat like the movie hasn't even been going two minutes really and you see exactly who lisa is you see the essence of who baby is and you see the dynamic of their family very very quickly and baby's just annoying honestly the more i watch this movie the more i realize that baby is a terrible sister she would be the most annoying sister ever because okay so let's talk about it they get there and lisa sees one of the guys taking in a whole bunch of shoes for another guest and she says oh my gosh look at that mom i should have brought those coral shoes and her mom says well sweetheart you brought 10 pairs well the coral shoes match that dress and then the dad and baby reach out and they're like this is not a tragedy police dogs used in birmingham monks burning themselves in protest they just completely belittle her and like kind of make themselves better than her in that moment and that's honestly what they do the whole movie to both lisa and to her mom right off you get this division well even and you see that visually as the movie opens because baby is sitting behind her dad in the car and lisa is sitting behind her mom in the car so right from the beginning you see this division in their family where baby and the dad are kind of like the intellectual smart ones who are going to change the world and mom and lisa are just pretty women who nothing is expected of them but to be pretty women okay we have to talk about one of my very favorite parts i'm going to say that about every part probably so they get there and they go to a merengue class in the gazebo and this is actually a really important scene because you get to meet Penny, who is also one of the main characters in the movie, and she's very important. And she's teaching the class. There is this guy in the background, <laughs> and he is acting his heart out, dancing the merengue. And he has, like, plaid <laughs> shorts on and yellow socks, I think. I think they're blue. I don't, they're super bright colors. And they're all the way up to his knees. And he's just living his best life dancing. And I love it so much. And it is hysterical. And also in this scene, you are you are introduced to a, a character you never meet. We just call her the laughing lady. And she literally just laughs really loud in the background. That's, you never see her face. She's the Glen Coco of... <laughs> dirty dancing a lot of the scenes you just hear her laughing in the background it's really really funny so we continue on in this film and they get to so they're in their they're in their cabin and baby's like hey i'm gonna go look around she says it just like that and they she goes up to the main house from their little cabin to look around and she stumbles upon a staff meeting so at the main house she is eavesdropping on this staff meeting and it's all of the waiters and the owner max kellerman is like hey like this is a classy place like you guys are like basically your front of house you're more important make sure everybody has a good time and they're all from like harvard and yale and you know they're fancy and then out walks the entertainment staff and johnny is in the lead and he's wearing sunglasses at night inside with a leather jacket black leather jacket hung over his shoulder and he just comes in as johnny castle and immediately baby is in love you get to meet Robbie who is another he'd like to think he's the main character but he's not he's just really annoying but he's sort of a main character he's just a douche who happens to be a big deal <laughs> and they have a little like who's the cooler guy dance off i was just sort, gonna, say, gonna say it's a dance off like i didn't know how else to say that they they have a dance off which is funny because this is dirty dancing they don't have a dance they off. don't have a dance they off. might as well though but johnny definitely gets the better of the encounter 
after this staff meeting, it pans, it pans to them going to dinner, their first dinner at Kellerman's as a family. And this is again, an incredibly important scene. So the whole family sits down, Max Kellerman comes over and is like, hey, these people are my special guests, give them whatever they want. And Robbie is their waiter. So they're all sitting at dinner and Max is asking, the owner is asking her dad about his family and what they're going to do and you know and her dad says oh baby's gonna change the world and he turns max turns to lisa and says and what are you going to do and baby says to max oh lisa's going to decorate it dude the discussions that josie and i have had about this freaking line what kind of cokehead relative? No, that no, no, no. We're not John Mulaneying here. What kind of sister says that about her other sister? Not cool. Not cool. But again, another example really, really early in the movie of what they expect of Lisa, which is nothing. They, As long as she looks pretty, she's done her job. And f- don't even get me started on the, on the feminism there. But also... That's really important because it's coming from baby. So it's not even, I mean, it's, it's not even her dad saying that that's baby saying, this is what my sister does. This is all we expect of my sister. And it's a really horrible moment. Actually, it's very, very sad. And from there, I believe they go to the dance hall Mm -hmm. and her, and we haven't even talked about Neil yet. Oh, let's talk about Neil. Ugh, Neil, literally the notes that we took on the movie say Neil equals tool. (laughs) And that's really all you need to know, but he's kind of important, so we'll talk about him more. (laughs) So Baby is dancing with Neil, who is Max Kellerman's grandson. And he thinks pretty highly of himself, and they're dancing and he says like oh like where are you gonna go to college and i can't remember mon holyoke but no but her dad says that earlier she tells neil while they're dancing that she's going to be majoring in economics of underdeveloped countries because she's going into the peace corps and then he says Oh, later this summer, I'm going with a couple of the boys to Mississippi for a freedom ride, which is so freaking ridiculous because that paints Neil as this dude who's way into equality. And as you will see, my friends, Neil does not care about equality because he is full of himself and the upper class. Thank you. Anyway, while they are dancing, Johnny and Penny, who we met earlier, giving the dance lesson, come out and they're like all dressed up and they do a dance. I'm not sure which one it is. Sorry if any of you are professional dancers, which I'm sure everybody is. This part I think is kind of important because you get to see a little bit of the chemistry between the entertainment staff and the owners and how much they are looked down upon by everybody. For example, they're doing this incredible dance and they look so good doing it and it looks like so much fun. And all Neil says is they shouldn't be doing that here. It's not going to sell lessons. Like, first of all, why wouldn't that sell lessons? That doesn't make any sense at all. Like, they look so amazing. They look like they're having so much fun. And literally, that's the point of them coming out in the middle of the dance hall and doing this is to say, hey, we're giving lessons. Like, I don't understand why he would say that. It's infuriating. And then Max also gets mad at them and tells them to stop dancing. I guess because they're drawing too much attention. I don't know. I don't really get that part. Honestly, it's like, weird. Heaven forbid they're good at what they do and they look good doing it. They're literally there to give lessons. I don't know. I think it's just a, an example, like Josie said, of 
the chemistry between the two and how if the dance people, as they're called, or the entertainment staff, as they're also called, if they kind of go off and do their own thing even a little bit, the management is not okay with it. They have to have complete control over them, which on one hand, I guess you could say is fine because they're their employers, but it's also not cool because well, we're not going to get into an employment thing here. I didn't expect that to come out of this movie. But anyway, it's just it's a moment of the control and chemistry between them. The next scene of the movie takes us to baby going for a walk. And to be completely honest with you, this is like the turning point in the film. And I've never thought it was super in character for baby because she's going on a walk, right? Exploring the resort. And she comes upon this pathway that's like meandering away. And she sees a sign that says, no guests allowed staff quarters. And she decides to blatantly ignore it and keep going. I don't know. Baby just doesn't seem like the kind of person to me who's just going to ignore, like, I don't know. Like, she's, in a lot of ways, she's really conventional and rule-following, and so it just feels weird for her to do this. But another thing just occurred to me. Maybe it's like, that doesn't apply to me, you know? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Like, maybe the rules are kind of beneath her in some ways, like, because her dad and Max are friends. Like, it doesn't matter. Maybe. I don't know. So she ignores the sign. And she's walking along this meandering path. And she comes upon... Oh my gosh, we haven't even talked about Billy. Billy. She comes upon Billy, who you, have, who you have met if you've watched the movie. By this point, you've met Billy. He is Johnny's cousin. And he you meet him in the very beginning of the movie. He helps them carry their luggage to their cabin. So she knows him already. And she sees him carrying three watermelons. Very oddly shaped watermelons, I might add. I put that in our notes. Weird watermelon. I've always thought this. They're very long and skinny watermelons. And I'm not an idiot most of the time. So I know that it's probably like a specific kind of watermelon. But they're just weird. They're just weird watermelons. And that's how I really feel about it. I mean, one of the most quoted lines ever comes because of this scene, though. Because he's carrying three giant watermelons. And she's like, oh, here, let me help you carry the watermelons. And he's like, no, your parents would kill you. Max would kill me. Like, no. And then immediately changes his tune and is like, okay, well, can you keep a secret? So she helps him carry the watermelons. (laughs) I carried a watermelon. Hence the line, I carried a watermelon. So they take these watermelons up some more stairs to a big hall. And you can hear this music playing from down below where she saw first saw him with the watermelons. And it just gets louder and louder as they get to the doors. And then Billy, like, busts open the doors. He almost drops the watermelons everywhere, but doesn't. It's very impressive. And in this room, you see, like, 75 million couples just grinding (laughs) that's the first word that came to mind they're just dancing (laughs) so baby and billy like walk into the room and she's obviously like very uncomfortable and they're standing at the edge just watching everybody and johnny and penny come in and they start dancing and she starts talking to billy about him And that's when you find out that Johnny and Penny are not actually a couple, which is very important. They are not actually a couple, even though it looks like they are. So they dance, they do their little thing. Then he comes up to Billy. Johnny does. Johnny comes up to Billy and he says, Yo, cuz, what's she doing here? And Billy very proudly says, she's with me. She came with me, which I love so much because Billy is a gem. And if this movie was just about him, I think it would be equally as great. No (laughs) lie. I love him so much. So Johnny's like, hey, whatever. Like, but that's when she says, I carried a watermelon and then is embarrassed because that's all she could think of to say. So this is when we have our famous line, I carried a watermelon. And then 
another song starts and baby is watching Johnny dance with everybody. And she starts like moving with the music a little, you know, how like involuntarily you do. She also <laughs> takes her sweater off, which we didn't notice until literally tonight, like the 450th time we've watched this movie. At some point she takes her sweater off. And so she's just moving to the music. And then Johnny looks over and kind of sees her like semi dancing and he does this incredibly provocative, inappropriate thing that Josie is imitating right now. He just smiles and like beckons her over and he's going to teach her how to dance. Which she's terrible at. She has no rhythm, which is not surprising based on what you've seen of her so far in the movie. But this part is very important. It's a turning point for her because she's seeing a side of the world that she's never seen before. And I think she's very intrigued by it, but she's, she's privileged. She's, she's definitely privileged. Her dad is a doctor. You know, I don't know where they're from, but you assume that it's a nice place. They have a nice house, all of those things. So this is people and places that she's never experienced before. And I think she likes mm -hmm. she likes it a lot. And I think that's uncomfortable for her, but it's mostly just really exhilarating in the moment. The next scene we'll just touch briefly on, because if we go this in-depth into every part, we're going to be here forever. But they're trying on wigs. The next day. The next day. I don't know why, but her and Lisa are trying on wigs. Well, you hear the guy go, ladies, join our hair raising wig show. Have you ever heard that in the background? Try Jackie Kennedy Cleopatra wig. That still doesn't explain anything. It's a wig. <laughs> it's just a fun. <laughs> it's just a fun. It's just a wig show. It's a fun thing you do when you go to a fancy resort in the 60s. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, why they're doing it isn't important. <laughs> but Penny is there like passing out the wigs and Robbie comes up to Lisa and this part is important because you find out that Robbie has some money saved up a considerable amount of money saved up for a car and you see this sort of I mean it's not between Penny and Robbie mostly you just see Penny noticing the interaction going on between Lisa and Robbie. Then, then it pans to that night. So it, it, it I keep saying it pans to. It doesn't. Cuts it to. cuts to because it's an entire, entirely different scene. It's that night, and they are at um, the gazebo. They're at the gazebo. We don't, we don't see dinner this night. Everybody is dancing out in the gazebo, out on the lawn. Okay, so it's like fancy stuff going on, and. They're all, so Baby is, is there with her parents, and they're waiting for a waltz, and you meet this character named Vivian Pressman. Vivian Pressman is taking dance lessons from Johnny, and they're dancing on the gazebo. And um, Lisa is not in this scene, because actually during the wig show, she says to Baby, hey, will you cover for me tonight? I'm going to go to the golf course. So Lisa's not there. Baby and her parents are just vibing, waiting for a waltz. And then, and then Neil comes up. Okay. He's such a dweeb. Okay. He comes up and he interrupts Johnny in the middle of his dance with his client, you know, doing his job and says, Hey, where's Penny? To which Johnny replies, what do you mean? Where's Penny? She's taking a break. She needs a break. To which Neil replies, as long as it's not an all night break. Puts his arm around baby and says, come on, doll. Right? Yeah. Like, ugh. Calls her, ugh. Calls her doll. And then her parents are, like, all proud because she's with Neil. And they walk off into the night. So they're standing on this bridge of sorts. Um, dog, maybe? Away from the dancing and things. And Neil is just explaining to baby how incredible he is because he has two hotels and he has to say it he's known as the catch of the county imagine telling on yourself like that he literally says to baby quote 
I have to say it. I'm known as the catch of the county. End quote. To which Baby says very unenthusiastically, I'm sure you are. He just goes on about how any parent here would be so excited that their daughter was with me because I'm so cool because I can have any girl I want. Oh, he's just the worst. But anyway, from wherever they're standing, they see Robbie and Lisa walking back from the golf course. And it's obvious that something has happened with Robbie and Lisa. And you can tell Lisa's very uncomfortable. And we are not going to go in depth into that. Lisa is obviously very uncomfortable. She's a little bit disheveled. Her heel is broken. Her jacket is askew. And she says to Robbie, Robbie, I don't hear an apology. And Robbie, the five-star gentleman that he is, says, go back to mommy and daddy and keep listening, Lisa. Maybe you'll hear one in your dreams. Harassment, assault. And it can be called that because Lisa is clearly not a willing participant. And we're not going to go into that because we'd be here like another two hours, okay? That's clearly what has happened, and they walk off. And Baby turns to Neil, and Neil says, I'm sorry you had to see that. Sometimes in this life, you see things you don't want to see. And I, okay, I, okay, here's, okay, okay, friends, okay. So, Neil is the manager, one of the managers, and he has just seen before his own eyes evidence of one of his employees very much mistreating a guest, and he's just like, hey, sometimes you see things you don't want to see. That is more than enough grounds to fire Robbie. Does he fire Robbie? No, he doesn't even freaking care. From there, Baby's like, uh, I'm kind of tired of this guy, but Neil says, well, are you hungry? Like, let's go get a snack is just for the resort from what it looks like. And while they're in the kitchen, she sees Penny. And it's only then that she decides to use Lisa as an excuse to get away from Neil. She's like, oh, I better I better go check on Lisa because she's worried about Penny. Not her sister. Mm. She's not worried about her sister. She's worried about Penny, this woman she doesn't even know. So she gets away from Neil only to go find Billy and be like, hey, Penny's in trouble. She doesn't even go check on her sister. She doesn't. She doesn't do it. So she goes and gets Billy, and Billy gets Johnny, and immediately Johnny stops what he's doing, giving lessons in the gazebo, and they hurry and run to find Penny. And they have this conversation on the way there um, about why Penny is so upset, and it's because she's pregnant, and she doesn't have money or means or anything that she needs. Any kind of resource whatsoever she doesn't have. So Baby finds out she's pregnant, and she looks at Johnny because she automatically assumes it's Johnny's baby. Because of the chemistry between them, how well they dance together, all of that. And she kind of says almost automatically without thinking, what's he going to do about it? To which Johnny replies, what's he going to do about it? Oh, it's mine, right? Right away you assume it's mine? And she's kind of stands there like, well, yeah, it seems kind of obvious. So we need to fast forward a little bit because we're breaking down every scene. And I, you know what? I would be here for like a six hour episode where we break down every scene. We'd both be here for that, but I don't know if all of you would be. So they get Penny. They go back to the main dance hall place. Johnny's telling Penny, it's going to be okay. We're going to figure it out. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they find out that there is a real MD coming into town and that Penny can get an appointment with this MD. However, it costs a lot of money and the appointment would also be for Thursday. And that is when Penny and Johnny are supposed to go to the next hotel over and do a mambo act there, which is a big part of their salary and very important. They cannot miss this dance. In this scene, you also find out that Robbie is the father of Penny's baby. And as we found out earlier, Robbie has quite a bit of money that he is not willing to give Penny to help her in any way, shape, or form. And that he knows about the baby and he's refusing to help her. So Baby takes it upon herself to help Penny. So Baby takes it upon herself to help this poor woman in need. 
So she borrows money from her father and lies to him, tells him that she needs it for something, but it's not for her. It's for somebody else who needs help. And she also says it's not illegal, which, my friends, we should probably, here's the thing, okay? Here's, we need to confront this issue head on. The reason that Penny is going to go see this MD is to have an abortion. And um, it's very clear that if there were different circumstances, that's probably not what she would want. However, that's the circumstance she finds herself in. And if, I don't know if you know, but at this time, abortions were illegal. So baby is taking a huge risk by doing all of this, but she wants to help Penny. And that's the decision that Penny has made. So she goes and she gives Penny this money from her father. And Penny is pretty floored, actually, that this random girl would want to help her. But then she says, thanks, baby, but I can't use it. And it's because of this act at the neighboring hotel, the Sheldrake. They can't, again, they can't miss that gig or they'll lose it for the next summer. And it's a big part of their pay. From there, baby offers, well, that's not true. Billy volunteers, baby. Somehow baby ends up. Baby ends up learning the dance that they're supposed to do. She's filling in. For the Sheldrake. She's going to fill in for Penny so that she can have this appointment. So they start dance lessons. And what's important to know is that it's not the mambo. It's a feeling. (laughs) (laughs) It's a heartbeat. (laughs) Gagong. So we have one of the best montages in film history where it's just Johnny teaching baby this dance so that they can go perform it at the Sheldrake. And one thing that I actually, there's like a million things to love about this part of the movie. But one thing I really love is how much it shows their feet because it's a montage, again, of him teaching her the dance. So you see this kind of evolution of them learning the dance. You see her feet really clumsy at at the beginning. She's wearing her sneakers, which I love. I love her sneakers, but she's wearing her sneakers. She's really clumsy. And then as the scene progresses, it moves to her wearing high heels. You can see that she's learning the steps better. She's getting better at it. And that kind of shows the passing of time. Another really important aspect of this scene is the song, Hungry Eyes, iconic song, one of the best songs ever, but it kind of shows the, the blossoming chemistry between the two of them. It also shows very quickly how much Baby is changing. She's evolving a lot. And you see that in a lot of ways, but one huge way is through her wardrobe and the things that she decides to wear to practice dancing by herself and with Johnny. We've talked extensively about this, but I mean, obviously like she has to wear dance practice clothing so that there is a practical side to it, but you also see her putting on makeup and, you know, putting a little bit more effort into her appearance. And I think there's just so many ways you could interpret this, but it's just on the surface level, you see baby caring a little bit more about what she looks like. You see her kind of coming into her own in a lot of ways which she hadn't definitely hadn't done before. They are practicing the dance. She's learned the majority of it. And I can't believe we just glossed over that montage as quickly as we did. But we talked about Neil's hotels for like five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, say more right now. (laughs) There are so many important parts during that montage. You see kind of Penny and Baby being compared to each other in a lot of ways. And you see the relationship that Johnny has with Penny is just purely like brother and sister, kind of. Like he just really wants to take care of her. And which is good because she needs that. But I also don't love that they get compared so much. Like obviously Baby's not going to be as good at it. She has never danced in her life. I have just had an epiphany because Josie's saying they are compared a lot and they are because Penny is helping them. She's helping them prepare for this. So she's like helping baby with the steps and everything. And there's one part where Johnny and baby are dancing and then Penny goes up behind baby and starts doing the steps with her right behind her with her hands with her hands on her. And I've just realized this. Johnny makes eye contact with Penny and not baby the whole time 
No. Oh. That's sad. No, what I've realized, what I just realized is that because of where Penny's hands are and everything, it's like she and Johnny are dancing, but baby is between them. If I felt like I could drop this mic, I would drop this mic. The next scene is baby in more of the outfit that she'd be wearing. She's wearing like a loose skirt and the high heels and they're practicing the end of the dance and Johnny's like, oh my gosh, that was horrible. Like, are you trying to kill me? And she's like, yes, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I am. No, that's not what she says. <laughs> that is what she says, but that's not the context. <laughs> She answers him very, very sarcastically. She's like, we're supposed to do all these things. I'm doing all of this to save you, blah, blah, blah. But like, yes, what I really want to do is ruin your life, essentially. And he's kind of sits there for a minute, like taking her sarcastic anger. And then he just says, let's get out of here. Why are you making me do this? Okay. Because you're featured, man. This is like your part. The people want to hear your voice. They didn't know that, but they want to hear your voice. Okay. okay. So let's get out of here, Johnny says. They walk out into the rain, and his keys are locked in his car. So the only logical thing to do is to break the window. Obviously. Obviously, there's nothing else he could have done. Unlocks the car. They're on their way to another location to practice lifts the lift and while they're in the car driving there baby's like oh my gosh you're wild <laughs> and then she laughs kind of like that actually <laughs> because she just can't deal with like how much of kind of a bad boy johnny is she's like oh my gosh you broke your window. You're so cool. But this part's really important because in my personal opinion and Jordan's personal opinion, it's the first time in the movie Baby as a person and not be so annoyed with her. It's the first time that he's kind of like, hey, I think I might like this girl. Well, it's also the first time that you see Johnny laugh or smile or like seem to have any kind of genuine fun, really. And that he just, he looks over at her and smiles. And it's, it's this very just brief little simple moment, but it really is. And it's really, really neat. So they're driving their car. They're going to learn balance because they need to learn the lift TM and they're driving. <laughs> Josie thinks I'm a nerd. She just covered her face. That's what that means. You're a nerd. So they're driving and they're, because of the way that it's filmed, you see their silhouettes in the car for just a second. And it, this isn't important in any way. It's just hysterical. Baby's hair is so poofy. Like her hair covers like half of the car. It's hysterical and it's amazing anyway. So they practice lifts and um, they're on this log learning balance. And this is when Baby learns a little bit more about Johnny and kind of how he got into dancing. On this log, and they're not doing anything. This part of the movie is that Patrick Swayze was very against using any kind of uh, protection. That's, <laughs> that's not what we're going to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. We can't say that word. <laughs> log that they're balancing on is above this tiny little ravine and ravine makes it sound very it's, it's a, not it's a creek it's a yeah it's a creek and they're just vibing and but again but patrick swayze he wouldn't let them put any pads underneath the log in case he fell off which he did fall off he did and he actually had a previous knee injury where his agents and everybody were saying you know, you shouldn't dance in movies anymore because this knee injury was so serious. But he loved the script and he wanted to do the role, but he wouldn't let them do any kind of protective measures in this scene. So he did fall off the log and he re-injured his knee and it completely swelled up and they had to drain all the swelling from his leg. And it was like a big thing and can't, not canceled, it postponed production for quite a while. Okay, so then they are practicing the lift in this meadow and it's not going very well because baby's timing is just really off <laughs> in the end of that scene she like runs and jumps and it totally jumps too early and they end up she ends up just basically running into him and <laughs> knocking him over 
So they go into the water to practice lifts, which goes much better. And when you see this scene, you you think that she's got it. You're like, oh, she's good. It's like, she has everything she needs. They'll be fine. The next scene is Penny helping her get ready for the dance, which is that night. This scene is really important. This scene is a lot of things. It's many, many things. In the beginning of this scene, you see an old woman drop her bag and they run and help her. And she had, he, she's got like a million things falling out and they help her. And then they go to the dressing room and Penny is helping baby with her, with the dress she has to wear per, for the performance. And they're getting it fitted to baby because she's a lot shorter than Penny, etc., etc. Okay. And Penny tells her, I just want you to know that I'm not like a loose woman. Like I thought Robbie loved me. And I thought it was something special. And I'm really grateful that you're doing this for me. And then she confides in Baby and says, I'm really, really scared. And Baby assures her, it's going to be fine. You'll be fine. And then the next scene is Johnny and Baby performing at the Sheldrake. Presenting <laughs> Johnny Castle and partner in Mambo, Mambo Magic. Magic. And she's wearing so much makeup. And I've always hated that she wears so much makeup. Me but too. they are on stage. So I guess that's important. Anyway, they start the dance. She's doing great, I think. She turns the wrong way one time. And I love how Johnny chooses to handle the kind of like misstep that she does. He's totally nice to her, which he has not been the whole movie he's really been kind of a jerk to her but and when she goes to do the lift she chickens out and does a really stupid dance move instead we're fine and she then sees some people in the crowd from kellerman's and she's like hey we have to go because i'm worried they're gonna see me and we're gonna get caught doing this thing that why would it matter because her parents got caught her parents her would parents, find out yeah no it's not i don't know would max be mad about it no i don't think so i don't think it would be a big deal that penny wasn't doing it i guess she just thought it was a big deal because her parents might find out now that i'm thinking about it it really doesn't make sense because why would the Schumachers, do they know her parents? I don't Sylvia think so. Sylvia and Sydney, Sydney Schumacher. <laughs> I don't know. They but don't. It's, I feel it's, like it's a big resort. I don't think that it would Maybe, matter. Maybe it is because it's Johnny having a, a gig somewhere else and and baby's worried that her parents might find out. Maybe it's all of it. Because it's a, we're just now realizing, why is this such a big deal? I'm just going to go with all of those reasons. We did our little dance. We're good. Baby triumphed mostly. And they did it. And they're on their way back to Kellerman's. And Baby is changing out of her dress into her regular clothes in the backseat of the car while Johnny drives. And on the radio, you hear, Oh, you have to do. <laughs> I don't remember what song Touch it is. Touch my hand <laughs> to show you understand. Is that the one? Some kind of no wonderful. No, I can't express. We're going to get flagged for copyright or something. <laughs> okay, so they're driving along. Baby's changing in the back seat, And they're talking about it. And Baby's like, I didn't do the lift. Or well, I'm really sorry. And Johnny just keeps saying, you did real good. You worked really hard. You did good. And it's like so cute. And then you see him totally peeking at her in the rearview mirror, which is both cute and extremely problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? You're going to look at me and you're going to tell me that I'm wrong? I mean, no, I'm okay. not going to. I, I thought about it for a second, but no, you're right. Okay. Okay. So they get back to Kellerman's and as soon as they get out of the car, Billy runs up to him. He's like, hey, it's Penny. Come quick. So they run and it's clear that Penny has been kind of mutilated, honestly, by this doctor who was not a doctor. And so she immediately runs and gets her dad, who is a doctor, which is pretty convenient. Now that I think about that. Mm -hmm. And he goes and helps Penny. And when he gets there, he says, who's responsible for this girl? And Johnny immediately says, I am. Like, is she going to be okay? And 
he's like, well, everybody just get out of the room. And he helps Penny. And when he comes out, Johnny tries to tell him thank you. And he refuses to talk to Johnny. Um, and then on the way back to their cabin, he has this conversation with Baby. He's saying how, is that what my money paid for? Which, yes, I can't believe you lied to me. You're not the person that I thought you were. And she's trying, Dad, like, can I please just explain something? He says, you have to, you're to have nothing to do with these people ever again. And then he says the two really hardcore things about this scene. He says, I'm not going to tell your mother about this. What, like, but why? Like, we'll talk about that. And then he says, and take that stuff off your face before your mother sees you, indicating that baby is not allowed to wear makeup because she is above that. And also, why, why can't, her mom is not involved in anything to do with baby this entire movie. When she asks her dad for money, her mom is there and she says, oh, what's going on? And her dad totally brushes her off and it's like, oh, nothing, just whatever. So that's really problematic too, because more with baby, things would be a lot different. Now to the good part. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine telling on yourself like that. <laughs> I don't know how far we are into this episode at this point, but we're finally to- I think the, we're like an hour we into are, this. We're into the good part, finally. It's the sex scene. <laughs> Of course I'm going to leave this in. That's hysterical. <laughs> okay, so Baby goes to Johnny's room. And the reason that she goes to Johnny's room, so it's still nighttime, her dad has gone to bed, not told her mom, blah, 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 blah. She, she still has her makeup on. She goes to Johnny's room for the purpose of saying, I'm sorry, because her father treated him so horribly. Like, she doesn't want the night to end without, like, having this moment with Johnny to tell him she's sorry. And if you think about it, it really makes sense that she would need some kind of closure for the evening because it's been a huge night for all of them. I mean, they've worked toward this dance, the dance happened, and then everything with Penny happened. And I just, I understand why she just didn't go home and get in bed. Like she just needed to go talk to Johnny and tell him she's sorry about her dad and, you know, just kind of have this moment, really. And it's hysterical because she walks in and he's all awkward because she's in his room. And he says, well, it's not a great room. Like you probably have a great room. No, it's a great room. It's a great room. So she sits down. He's all like hosty and makes her sit. <laughs> she sits down and then he tries to turn off the music and she says, no, leave it. And then she says, I'm sorry about the way my father treated you. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they have this talk about what her dad did. And Johnny's like, I could never do anything like that. I'm not like that. I'm not cool enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not whatever it is enough to do anything good basically is what he says and baby tries to tell him that that's not true and he says to her that he's never known anybody like her who looks at the world and thinks that they can change it and she's so brave and she is like well i'm not brave i'm scared of everything and i'm i'm scared of what i saw i'm scared of what i did i'm scared of who i am and then she says, do you want to say it or do you want me to say it? <laughs> you can say it. She says, but most of all, I'm scared of walking out of this room and never feeling the rest of my whole life the way I feel when I'm with you. That was really good. <laughs> that was really good. So then there's sort of an awkward silence where Johnny's like, okay, well, she finally said it. That's kind of the look on his face is like, well, now we acknowledged this. The records flip, switch. I don't, know. I don't know. It's like the automatic the record switches. Cry to me <laughs> starts playing <laughs> is the name of the song. And baby asks Johnny to dance with her. And he's like, what? Here? Does she say like right now? Is that what she says? No, she just says here. Yeah. And they start dancing, and it becomes much more than a dance. It's important to note that this entire scene, he does not have a shirt on. <laughs> Incredible. You must know that. <laughs> so this beautiful scene happens. Dot, dot, dot. And we just have to say, we're just going to say it right here from the top of the sexual part of the film. They are so bad at kissing. <laughs> and I love Patrick Swayze, but I... I'm pretty sure it's his fault. I think it's him. I don't think that it's her. 
for a long for a long time we thought it was maybe just their chemistry together as actors and like that's just the way they kissed each other but then we saw Patrick Swayze in another movie where he kissed somebody and we're pretty sure that that's just the way that he kiss kisses kissed pardon me and um I don't I, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever been so disappointed in my life that's just the way he kisses they're terrible at kissing anyway cut to the next morning when they're all at breakfast her dad is legit. That's what I think every time that scene. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Penny exists. Her dad announces that they're leaving. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And Lisa's like, so soon, like, I was going to sing in, like, the end of the season? season talent show. And he's like, okay, I guess we can stay because Lisa and her mom made a big deal out, out of it. Her mom's name is Marge, by the way. We have not said that yet. Anyway, and then... Like, one of the funniest parts of the movie, he's like, so, Lisa, like, what are you going to sing in the talent show? And then gets up and leaves. <laughs> he asks her, and then he does not stay to hear her answer. He just gets up and walks away, and she's like, oh, w wait, and just, like, trails after him. And it's really funny. And then I, you know, the scene ends right there, but I have always wanted there to be a little bit more of that scene where Baby and her mom actually talk about something. Like maybe Baby could confide in her mother about what happened the night before. But no, the scene ends right there and you see Baby running to check on Penny. And while she's there, Johnny comes to check on Penny. It's obvious Johnny. that something has gone on between them and the most in oh. our everyday lives. Yeah is don't worry about Max. I'll tell him your grandmother died or something. <laughs> and then Penny immediately says, Johnny, what are you doing? I know what I'm doing, Penny. How many times you tell me never get mixed up with them? I know what I'm doing, Penny. <laughs> I, don't is that, I don't know. We say that one all the time, too. I know what I'm doing, Penny. Yeah, that one we quote a lot. So she's upset just because, like, she's a guest. She's just upset for a lot of reasons. Well, here's a... She has just gotten involved with somebody from baby's circle of life and what's happened oh my gosh i've never thought of that because when she said how many times have you told me not to get mixed up with them i thought she meant guests no not the upper class right is that what yeah oh that's never occurred to me i thought it was just the guest no because she's just gotten mixed up with quote unquote them and she's literally laying in bed recovering from a botched abortion because of it and so and she loves and cares about johnny so i mean obviously she's really upset that makes sense to me but at the beginning of the movie max specifically tells johnny that he is not allowed to be involved with any of the guests <laughs> only the rich servers and stuff yeah so even though they are staff they are above the other staff there's like a hierarchy within the staff and the waiters like robbie have automatically been put at the top so it's still the upper class your brain is exploding <laughs> all over me <laughs> then there is this beautiful little moment and all that happens is johnny walks out from penny's room baby's waiting for him johnny's like hey i have to go like i have a lesson she's like okay yeah go go ahead and he's walking away and she just says johnny and there's this these looks that pass between them and you can tell that she's asking like was this was this a one night stand was this meaningless and you can tell by the look on his face that no it was much more than that he smiles at her like we're good and everything's fine and i actually deeply love you but could never say that out loud and then, and then he walks away because <laughs> they've known each other for a week <laughs> So that's what happens there. And it's really, really. So the next scene that we're going to talk about is probably the most iconic scene in the entire film, actually. Johnny and Baby are dancing together. Josie's face says that she doesn't agree. It's a freaking iconic scene, okay? They're dancing together in the dance studio. And a song is playing. And they're just, like, vibing. And Johnny's, like, trying to be all handsy and romantic. And Baby's like, OMG, stop. Like, we're trying to dance. And everybody probably knows this, but this scene was improv. This scene was not scripted. And I hate addressing these rumors. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh, yeah. According yeah. to rumor, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey did not like each other very much in real life and apparently i don't know how true any of this is 
this is, I don't even know where this information came from, but this is something I've taken as fact. I think he might have said something in an interview once or something. I think, I think what it was, what they, they, they butted heads a lot on set, but I don't think it was them like not liking each other. I think that they just maybe had differing opinions or, um, maybe they were both headstrong. Didn't he think that, like, I've heard that he thought she didn't take things serious enough. So I think it was just kind of more just like a, oh, like, sometimes we didn't get along. And I think that that has evolved over the years to being like, oh, my gosh, they actually hated each other, which is not true. Because anybody who watches this scene and knows that it's not scripted knows that if they didn't like each other, they would not have been able to come up with this scene by themselves because they were just practicing whatever in their between takes and this is what they came up with by themselves and i don't think that that would have happened if they had hated each other they wouldn't have been spending their break together first of all if they didn't like each other but this scene is really cute and is just them just flirting the whole time and i love it well, they, they start, you know, they sing this part of the song together. You know, Sylvia and Mickey, how do you call your lover boy? We can't really say it because I'm sure that that's illegal in some way for copyright reasons. But it's so beautiful. They kind of act out this part of the song and Johnny's playing air guitar and they're just in love, essentially. And as they're having this lovely moment, you hear Neil say, Johnny, and they have to hurry and stop being in love because Neil's coming in. Baby just pretends that she's taking dance lessons. And Neil's entire countenance changes when he sees that Baby is there. And he becomes much more like macho almost. He's like, oh, you're you're taking lessons from Johnny? I could teach you. And Johnny shuts the music off and it's really funny. Because it's very passive aggressive. <laughs> but then Neil starts talking to Johnny about the end of the season dance, which they always end with the mambo. But this year he wants to do something different. You know, move with the times. And Johnny has a lot of ideas about that. And he's been working with some of the other staff kids on some different dances that you can tell he feels pretty passionate about. But Neil is like, oh, no, no, this is, this is way over your head here. That is a direct quote. He suggests that they do the final dance to the Pachanga. Sure, Neil. We'll end the season with the Pachanga. Great idea. You can tell in this scene that Neil really thinks he's done something. Okay, he's just like. I am God. And he thinks that he has, he's going to just reinvent the end of the season show and it's going to be great. But he doesn't give Johnny's ideas the time of day. And like the way that he says Pachanga and he looks over at baby as he's saying it, like, watch me have this moment. And it's like, no. And he leaves because he's a jerk. He was a jerk to Johnny the whole time he was there. So after he leaves, Johnny is very upset. The next scene is Johnny and Baby discussing what just happened. And I think the single funniest part in this whole movie, without a doubt, is Johnny saying, the little wimp, he wouldn't know a good idea if it hit him in the pachanga. (laughs) Because it's not pachanga, it's the pachanga. Watch this release and then us get told that we're pronouncing it wrong still. We are quoting Patrick Swayze. We're we're quoting the movie, though. He says Pachanga is the right way to say it. But Neil was pronouncing it Pachanga because he's a dweeb. So that's why he said when he says the line, he wouldn't know a new idea if it hit him in the Pachanga. He's like, he's just further making fun of him. It's hysterical. So Baby's like, why didn't you talk to him? Like, you have these awesome ideas. Why can't you tell him what you want to do? Make him listen. And he's like, baby, like, I can't talk to these people. They're rich and they're mean and they'll replace me. Like, th- like I'm nothing to them. I can't show them or tell them my ideas. Like, they're having this, this argument. And she's saying, no, Johnny, you need to fight harder. You need to make them listen. You need to 
make this room for yourself as like essentially like make something of yourself make them listen to you you have a lot to offer and as they're having this argument down below them you see lisa and robbie and baby's dad come out of this come out of a door and her dad's arms are around both of them and lisa's being really stupid about politics and i can't talk about it because i get heated up and it's just like this moment of you like seeing how much their dad approves of Lisa being with Robbie and baby is horrified and like pulls Johnny away and makes them crouch down because she doesn't want them to be seen together. He just says that like telling him I'm your guy, you know, like that's just part of the reality now. And this is a very intense part actually. So I think it's kind of funny that every time I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's so cute because he's really upset. (laughs) He's very upset. He says, she's like, no, I'm going to tell him. It's just complicated. And he says, I don't believe you. And he leaves. He goes and talks to Penny. Long story short, Johnny ends up beating up Robbie. (laughs) That's quite the job. That was a leap. (laughs) That's a leap. But it's not super important, everything that happens there. Johnny beats up Robbie. Johnny and baby make up. They're good. Then it's the the talent show. Baby is painting sets for... The The end of the season talent show, which Neil asked for her help with, which can we talk for just a second about how Neil makes her do these stupidest things. In the beginning of the movie, he makes her be a part of a stupid like magic show. He makes her help with sets. He just it's like she's a maid almost. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so she's painting sets. And Lisa's like, goes up to her, hold on, we have to talk for a second about how terrible of a singer Lisa is. She, guys, listen, Lisa is a really, really bad singer. Like I've tried to imitate it and I can't, and I'm not like a fabulous singer, but she's really, really bad. But one of the inspiring things about Lisa is that she either doesn't know that or doesn't care because she's going to sing in the talent show. So you hear Lisa in the background practicing for her number and she's awful. And then she goes up to baby who is painting a palm tree and says, okay, but this is actually really, this is important for a lot of reasons. Okay. We know we do. And baby knows that too. And so she's like, no, no, Lisa, that's a bad idea. But Lisa like walks away and she's just decided this and it's not good. But also in this scene, you see Johnny because he's helping with the the talent show. And Vivian Pressman, remember, she was taking lessons from him before, blah, 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 blah. And um, there was some eyebrow raising going on, you know, more than dance lessons, if you know what I mean. And so she comes up to Johnny and she says, hey, tonight's our last night together. I've worked something out for us. And Baby sees this happen, but Johnny doesn't, like, know that she hears And then a couple minutes later, Johnny basically rejects her. And Baby's like, oh my gosh, he loves me. And it's like really sweet. Cut to that night. And Lisa has completely dressed up in a beautiful flowy dress and a pearl necklace. And her hair and makeup is beautiful. And she is a classy lady. And she goes to Robbie's cabin wearing a beautiful dress and pearls. And she finds Robbie and Vivian together in his cabin. She's horrified and she leaves. But this is important to see because you see that Vivian is in the staff quarters. Which is important because Baby is also in the staff quarters with Johnny and when she they both leave at the same time in the morning and Vivian sees baby leaving and is really upset that Johnny would have the audacity to be with anybody but her and decides to get revenge on him by saying that he stole her husband's wallet while they were playing a game the night before And she knows that he can't say anything about why he actually wasn't there because he'd lose his job. So it's really just the perfect way for her to get back at him because either way he's going to get fired. Vivian is the worst. Okay, Vivian, Vivian Pressman is the actual worst. So we're at breakfast the next morning with all of our characters and Baby is hearing that Johnny is being accused of theft. And, you know, they're saying 
there's an eyewitness. Vivian says she saw him and he doesn't have an alibi. And baby's like, well, crap, I'm his alibi. He was with me all night. But she's like, I can't tell that because my dad will find out that I have a guy and, you know, Johnny will get in trouble and all this stuff. And, but they're, but Max and Neil are on their way to go fire Johnny for being a thief. And baby is like, you know what? No, I can't let this happen. I have to save, I have to save Johnny. So in order to save Johnny from being a, potentially arrested, going to jail, um, she tells her dad that she was with Johnny all night. She knows that he couldn't have stolen the wallet. And that's the end of the scene. The next scene is her and her dad in the gazebo. And they have a very intense talk about kind of like morals and expectations for each other and says that she's not proud of herself either, but she loves him and she still wants to have a relationship, but she doesn't want this to be the end of their relationship. Mm -hmm. And he starts to cry and it's actually a really beautiful scene and very well done and very meaningful and important. From there, Johnny finds Baby later that day, and he says, hey, oh, she's, she accuses the Schumachers, who is the lady that she helped earlier in the movie when, so Johnny's in the clear because of that. So she's really excited because they'd have to apologize, everything's great, and then Johnny says, I'm out, Baby. And she realizes that even though all of this has happened, Johnny has still been fired because of her. Because he broke the rules and had a romance with her. She then gets very upset, understandably, because she was very vulnerable with her family and her dad. And she like she told her family about this. She hurt people that she loves. He still lost his job. Nobody won. Everybody lost really big time and she's very upset. So Johnny goes to talk to her dad, which is also a very important scene. This scene is, is, is crazy. So Johnny has to leave quietly. So he still gets his summer bonus, but before he leaves, he goes to talk to baby's dad. And when he shows up at their cabin, he is dressed in his trademark, all black outfit, black leather jacket, black shirt, black pants, black boots, and his black sunglasses. And, you know, initially when you see this scene, you're like, what the heck, dude? Like trying to like try to make a good impression for her dad, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, it's too late for that. But Josie and I have talked about it a lot. And we think that like, that's like what he's most comfortable in, you know, like that's like what he wears. And he's trying to just be himself and have as much confidence as he can. And he's, the real reason that he's going to talk to her dad is because he wants to stand up for baby. He wants to set the record straight as far as he can. So he gets there and he says, you know, Mr. Hausman, I'm going anyway. I don't know like what she must be thinking, but like baby is so much like you. She does things to make other people look up to her. She's such a good person. And her dad just completely cuts him off and says, don't you tell me what to see. Like, don't you try to tell me about my daughter. I look at you and all I see is somebody who got his partner in trouble and sent her off to a butcher while he moved on to an innocent girl like my daughter. And Johnny just kind of sits there for a split second. And he says, yeah, I guess that's what you would see. And he just turns around and leaves. And I have always like every, okay. I have just always wanted him to be like, dude, would you shut up and let me explain? (laughs) Because There are so many moments when Baby tries to explain it to him, and then Johnny tries to explain it to him, and it's like, would you just shut up and let them tell you what's been going on? But he won't, like, he won't listen. He does not, he doesn't care. He's so closed off. Like, he thinks he knows what has happened, and that's what happened. Like, he's not open to any kind of explanation that they could give. So that doesn't end well, but Johnny tried, and it's really important. And then you cut to the scene of Johnny and Baby saying goodbye to each other and it is just heartbreaking and in the background there is a song playing that patrick swayze actually sang she's like the wind and it's beautiful but this scene gives you so much insight to how much they actually got to know each other because 
they're like, oh, we surprised everybody. And she says, I can't imagine being here without you. And he says, well, maybe you'll have time, you know, to do other things. Maybe they'll saw you into seven pieces now, which is really funny because earlier in the movie, in the magic show, they saw her in half. And I just love to think that they had to sit around and talk about how Neil made her do this stupid magic show and what she had to say about getting sawed in half and like how stupid it was. And they had to have made fun of Neil. And I love that little detail. But this part's also really upsetting because all he says is, I'll see ya, and gets in his car and leaves. He says, I'll never be sorry. He does. He says, he'll never be sorry. You can tell that he's really upset about it, but then he doesn't say goodbye. He says, I'll see you, gets in his car and leaves. The next few scenes is baby just walking around very melancholy and depressed about everything that happened. And then, my friends, we come to the end of the season talent show. This moment that everybody's been working toward. And you see Neil singing on stage, and he's a terrible singer, which is hysterical because two seconds ago you heard Patrick Swayze singing, which is beautiful. And, you know, and so it shows Lisa's up there on stage. She's performed. Everybody's singing this end of the season song. And Baby and her parents are in the audience. And they watch Lisa sing. And they're all very proud. But it's really important because they're kind of sitting, like, by this pillar of sorts. Like, their table is kind of by, like, a, a pill, like a jut out in the wall a little bit. And Baby is sitting right there by that pillar jut out thing. And her parents are in front of her. And she's, you know, she's clearly been kind of pushed uh, pushed behind them really like I mean literally she's been pushed behind them but visually you see that and the empty chair in front of them is the chair that Lisa would have been sitting in so it shows her new place in the family and where what they're thinking of her now essentially that was deep Thank you. <laughs> so then you see Johnny walk in to the building he walks in and all of the entertainment staff is having to stand in the back of the sort of it's kind of an auditorium and none of them have seats they all just have to stand in the back and Johnny walks up to him and everybody's like oh my gosh Johnny's here yay and he's like yeah I'm really cool I'm wearing all black and my hair looks really good walks <laughs> over <laughs> I've always thought his hair looks a lot different in this scene it does, yeah he walks over to their table he like it takes him like two seconds to find baby. Mm -hmm. Which is beautiful. He finds her in the crowd immediately. Yeah. Because of their love. I don't know. Or because it was scripted that way. <laughs> <laughs> Walks over to the table, looks at her parents and says, Nobody, Nobody puts, puts baby, baby in a corner. corner. And obviously this line is one of the most quoted lines in all of cinematic history. And it's become really overdone and kitschy. However, this line is so beautiful. It's it it shows so many things. It I've already commented on the seating arrangement, so you talk about this line. It's so good. It's just such a way for him to stand up for her that he hasn't got to do until now. And now like he has nothing to lose. He has no problem saying whatever he wants to to her parents and to her dad specifically because he's already lost his job what's he gonna do what he's saying is to her parents that like nobody puts baby in a corner yeah but what he's actually saying is you can't treat baby that way she's much more special than that she deserves a lot more and then he takes her hand and they go up on stage and this part is beautiful. Everybody's like, OMG, what's Johnny doing? And he goes up to the microphone and he says, sorry about the disruption, folks. So he says that he is going to do the final dance of the season. And he hands Billy, who is backstage in charge of things. He says, I'm going to do this dance and I'm going to do it with, my, with a great partner, somebody who's taught me that there are people willing to stand up for other people and somebody who's taught me about the kind of person that I want to be, Miss Frances Hausman. 
And then her dad's like, oh my gosh, I have to go save my daughter. And her mom's like, sit down, Jake. And it's that moment of like, yes, go mom. Yeah, I completely, I skipped over <laughs> that part. It's really important. Okay. <laughs> so um, I think it's important to note that Johnny brought the record mm-hmm. to play for the dance. He picked out the song specifically for their dance, which I think is beautiful. The music starts playing and Johnny and baby start dancing and they're doing the mambo. And it's just beautiful. And it's, it's, it's a different version of the mambo. Like it it has other things mixed into it. And it's just so beautiful. Like they move so perfectly together. Like baby looks incredible. Like she, and you get this sense, like she hasn't just learned this one dance, you know, like she's learned so much and become such a different person. And it's actually just really beautiful. And you see her parents kind of being really impressed with that. And her mom says, I think she gets this from me because she just looks so great up there and it's beautiful. There are several really beautiful little moments in this scene. Oh, then the iconic scene of Johnny jumping off the stage into the crowd and doing his little dance number with the entertainment staff. And for the longest time, it made no sense to me that all of these people would just know this dance that he was doing. But then I was like, they're the entertainment staff and he's doing the mambo. So (laughs) yeah, they would know the dance. That's way more realistic than any other movie ever made. We're going to do the lift. All he does is nod. And then she nods and they know exactly what they're saying. And these two guys come up, they help baby off the stage and she just runs toward Johnny and he lifts her. I'm lifting my arms now. In the perfect lift, they finally did it. The perfect cast. I did not expect to quote (laughs) Goofy movie. (laughs) They finally do it. The perfect lift and everybody's cheering and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And at this point, everybody in the crowd, they start putting away the chairs and everybody's just starting dancing and it's really great. And then Johnny and Baby are going to slip away into the night for a second. <laughs> Robbie, Robbie don't shut himself. up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Can, can you like dub that in? No. <laughs> no. We- <laughs> I'm not a miracle worker. <laughs> so we forgot a really important part. Okay, friends. So something happened. And um, what happened was Josie and I got really excited to talk to you about the end dance. So we forgot a really (laughs) important part. But during this end scene where everybody's up on stage and they're really proud of Lisa, Robbie walks by the family table and her dad stands up and gives him a fairly thick envelope and says, here, Robbie, good luck in medical school. And Robbie says, oh, thank you. I also wanted to help you, wanted to thank you for your help with the penny situation. And you're like, OMG. And her dad says, what? To which Robbie says, I thought you knew. I mean, I thought Penny had told you. You know, we've all gone into messes like these. Which I sincerely hope not. Have we? That, that's just a completely normal thing for people to do. Anyway, so he, her dad finally knows that it was Robbie and not Johnny all along. Takes the money back. And can't remember where we were going with this. Well, so later, when Baby and Johnny are oh, slipping right. away from the final dance, her dad approaches them. And he says to Johnny, I know you weren't the one who got Penny in trouble. And all Johnny says is, yeah. He's a man of few words. <laughs> and her dad says, when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. And then says that Baby looked beautiful and it's just a moment of apology between the two of them which let's talk about how it was long overdue okay so they have that little moment with her dad and it's great and then they go back out on the dance floor and they're dancing and it's beautiful and then they're at the end of the song and johnny starts mouthing to baby i've had the time of my life i've never felt this way before and i swear it's true and i owe it all to you and then there's a final kiss that's the best kiss of the whole movie, I think. He lifts her up and they kiss and it's so cute. And that's that's it, my friends. That is the end of Dirty Dancing.
starring Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey. And I don't know how long we've been here in this episode, but this movie is so many things. And obviously, we've we've talked about a lot of things, but at its very core, this movie is just beautiful. And I love it so much. I love it because you can completely overanalyze every line in this movie and come up with theories every time. Or you can watch it and not care about anything and it's still a good movie. Does not matter how you look at it. It's still fun to watch. You can look at this movie as a kind of a commentary on race, on gender, on class, on you know so many different things. Or you can just look at it as a love story. You can look at it as this, the growth of Baby herself. Like There are so many angles to this movie. But also it's just this simple movie that's really fun to watch and has a lot of very likable people in it. Josie and I have spent hours and hours and hours talking about this movie and there are so many things about it that we love. So I'm just so grateful that Josie was finally able to join us on the podcast and that this is what we talked about. Now that we have come to the end of our episode, Josie, how do you feel? I feel much better about talking into the microphone. I was really nervous to begin with. Everybody, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for hanging out with us and talking about Dirty Dancing and loving Dirty Dancing with us. And um, don't fret because Josie will be back. I will be back. Definitely, especially if you guys liked this one. I don't know what other subjects we've talked about, but I know that I know that I know that there's one already planned that I'm coming back for at some point. So, so let us know how you feel because this could become much more regular if you're feeling good about it, which you should be because Josie's amazing. And um, so, yeah, Josie's going to be back in the future. We've got more movies to talk about in the future. Once again, thank you for being here with us today. You can follow me on Instagram at notstrictlyhistory underscore podcast, or you can send me a Gmail at notstrictlyhistory at gmail.com. And um, thank you again. We'll see you next time on Not Strictly History.